Oh, you can you open. You open. Open. Three, two, one. You're making a face. I'm You're gonna making a face that. during the I'm one gonna... time that I'm opening. This is the open. You're leaving all this in. Oh, let, it be, let it be known for the record that on Tuesday shows, when uh, Joe DeLeon's doing his open, I'm not making a face or giggling during his open. But when it's my time to open, even when I don't want to open sometimes, it's like Joe says, oh, why don't you go ahead and open? What do I do? I open. I try to be a pro. But then I get a little Snickers from Joe DeLeon while I'm... You do need a haircut. I do. It's disgusting. Let me see without the hat. It this is the Believe good. in FCS Football Podcast, by the way. Dip your head down a little bit. Oh, my God. It's terrible. It looks like it's terrible. It's That's terrible. not good. Uh, but See, I tried, to, I tried to grow it out, and then I started to realize pretty quickly it just, it just doesn't look good. My it laptop, looks terrible. My laptop was so close to my face there. Uh, but listen, this is the FCS Football Podcast presented by the Believe Podcast Network, a network that is gaining a lot of steam and momentum thanks to our great leadership. Maybe a couple of the producers could you know, start stepping up a little bit, but for the most part, the leadership within the company, very, very strong, growing very well. I know uh, some producers are working with some big-time shows. It's looking pretty good, uh, but, you know, Talent rings true is what I will say. And I would like to thank all the people that believe for finding the talent within me to be able to open this show and host the Believe in FCS football podcast with Joe DeLeon. Joe, thank you for discovering me. I appreciate you. You're welcome. I, I had to hunt uh, Sean down and then I found him. Sean, I, I don't mean to, to, to distract from that, from that fantastic open you just did. Sure. Uh, I, I managed into a matter of like f- like five minutes a uh, pissed off JMU fans on Twitter. <laughs> What did you do? I, I just pointed out that I thought the FCS Fan Nation poll was inaccurate to include, not include URI, who's 3-0, which I think is unfair. Every other poll has ranked them, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and they've also won pretty handedly in the games that they've played in, except the Albany game. But uh, I also pointed out that JMU's 1-2, and two, and their only wins against Dixie State, and they're ranked 11th. Uh, I think that's kind of biased, so... Uh, I had a one GMU fan correct me, who I think is a part of FCS Fan Nation, and then Peter Moody comes flying in. It's like, you or I hasn't been in the playoffs since 1985, just like completely not relevant to the <laughs> to the conversation. But uh, Sean, GMU fans, uh, I thought they liked me. I thought they liked me. Apparently, if I if I point out stuff about you or I and it not being ranked, it's yeah. Jamie Williams is giving you the business here. Let me see what he's about. Jamie Dukes. Official stats perform FCS top 25 voter. How is he oh. a voter? Where's my vote? Mm, I don't know. Ask him. Where are our votes? Does Peter Moni we- vote on the FCS fan? I don't know. I, I don't hope know. not. The FCS fan nation one, not the stats one. Oh, whatever. I want both. <laughs> I think they agreed to let us do it. I just don't know what uh, they might not after we just. We bashed. No, I'm not doing it. (laughs) Now I'm not. I've completely changed my mind within a course of 15 seconds. I want the big dog. I want the real one. We should make our own poll. What more do we have to do? Um, I don't know. I was very disappointed. I think it was JMU. Their, you know, their sports information department. They did like a, you know, like a post where it's like, what are people saying about the game? And there were like tons of hyperlinks to articles. This was, was for the Weber game. And then there were hyperlinks for podcasts. And I was like, oh, you know, I wonder if ours is in there. Ours was not included. Like, what? Like, what? Were there other national podcasts in there? Uh, yeah, Herders was. And there was another one in there, too. I just was like, really? You guys, like. Well, FCS Reddit respect. is going to take care of that, I'm sure. Or Reddit yes. FCS. They are. Uh, they've been very good to us. And uh, I'd like to give a shout out to them every show that I open because I'm also scared of them. Mm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure <laughs> they get their plug. <laughs> I'm always confused when we talk to them because um, I didn't know until last time that there's like multiple active users on the Twitter account. So when we DM with them, I don't know. Like multiples of them are a part of the conversation. So I don't know which one I'm talking to. It's. It's very confusing. Uh, no, but this is the official podcast of uh, Reddit FCS, I, w- I would say. Oh. Um, can, can we get a sponsor? Can you guys sponsor us? We'll get a DM me, please. I'm curious on. Uh, on what do you mean sponsor? sponsor? I have a sponsor right here for you, and that's Bet Online. And we got football kicking off again this week. Thursday night is kicking off, and we so got angry. NFL Sunday and college sports Saturday. You got everything you want. 
what are you going to be betting on baseball in September? Go screw. You can't do that. No fun. Loser. Go to, go to betonline.ag. <laughs> go to bet, go to bet online. Rip. Uh, head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use promo code NFL100. Bet online the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online your online sportsbook experts. Basically, that weird rant came from the idea that in, I think, a couple days, I'll be able to start placing more bets on NFL football. And then, Joe, I was your boy, noted college football fan. <laughs> Noted college football fan. Good one. 2-0 uh, on, on oh. SCS. On, 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 actually, FBS bets last week. What, what, what games you bet on? I had Oklahoma State winning outright at plus 146 mm. over Boise State because why wouldn't they? And then I had Penn State minus 6.5 covering, of course, because that's what they do. I, I need to get back into betting. I, I admit I have the itch. I, I it, the, you got the, no the itch. Start, I do. The season started. And you I keep, got no itch. I'm not. I'm not bluffing. I, the, it, what deterred me is uh, I made one bet for the Super Bowl. I made another bet, but we're not going to talk about that one. <laughs> I made a lot of money off of that one. Uh, the the other bet that I made for the Super Bowl, I put money down, and I wasn't even close. Like I bet on the Chiefs. I bet on a couple other things, a couple uh, prop bets, and I was like, nope, the one time I chose to do it, it didn't work. So I'm not betting again. Uh, but I, I have the itch again. I think I'm going to do it this week. Could you imagine being that guy who had a 16-team parlay and uh, only for Aaron Rodgers just to completely ruin it? Yeah, he was definitely... He he bit off more than he could chew picking Detroit over Green Bay. He just did. That's what it was. He bit off more than he could chew. I mean, it wasn't Couldn't a crazy be pick. What do you mean it wasn't? Pick. What do you mean it wasn't crazy? Of course it's crazy. Aaron Rodgers at home after getting a beat da- beat down on prime time. Mm. Yeah, I'm picking Aaron Rodgers there. The and I'm JMU... out on Aaron Rodgers. I'm out. Eh. No, I don't think he's very good this year. Uh, the JMU comments are continuing to pile in. Uh, thank you guys for. I don't know why everyone just hates Rhode Island. Like, what did we do? It's the one time we've been three and zero. When is the last time that's happened in Rhode Island history? I don't. Hey, Joe, look, they're still figuring it out, okay? J- Harrisonburg just got electricity about 25 years ago, so the social media and, and computers and all that is still coming, you know, is, it's coming slowly, and people are still trying to figure out, you know, maybe they don't have access to the record books at Rhode Island. You know, they just sit there in their stadium, and they just drink uh, grain alcohol, and then they throw streamers. That's what it, they do. That's it's their like life. When, when Kentucky started being, like, really competitive, and everyone just, like, kind of, like, kind of kept shrugging them off and they're like, nah, yeah, they're not going to be good. Yeah. They, you know, just won a couple games and now they're one of the better teams in the sec right now. Yeah. Was that with the Benny Snell? Was that the team where they started becoming really good? Uh, yeah. And um, who's the, the, the cat who, who was their quarterback, who, who's like a dual threat guy. I'm blanking on his name. He's, he was with the Raiders. He was with the, Oh my God. Uh, Lynn Bowden. No. Yeah. I think it's Lynn Bowden. I think it's who it was. I don't know. Sean, we got stuff to talk about. Don't ever ask me for a name because I have a default name I'll give you, but we're doing a show. It was almost your 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 lower third. <laughs> I got- days up, but- so, Sean, we're going to announce uh, officially uh, the flights need to be booked, but the uh, the official fist fight, the first annual Believe in FCS fist fight. <laughs> That's right. November 6th in Brookings, South Dakota. I like uh, how you put the Believe in at the beginning. <laughs> I don't know if Please it's really true. Sponsored event. Sponsored by <laughs> Bet Online. <laughs> and the uh, this this event, uh, the first annual Believe in FCS fist fight or FCS football fist fight, uh, it'll take place between me and Joe DeLeon uh, before the game happens uh, between South Dakota State and North Dakota State. And this really happened, and it came to mind uh, in between uh, recording the Tuesday show, the recap show, and this preview show, where I was doing work, and then when I do work, sometimes I'm not verbal. Because I'm reading, and Joe, who does minimal work, uh, will start talking Excuse to me, you. and then starts asking what I'm doing, or or if I heard him when I clearly I say, did. Are you? And it's ready? like we haven't been partners for four years, uh, and then it just becomes a uh, a whole deal where his face starts getting red, and he starts getting like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "You know what I'm gonna do? You haven't had any sense knocked into you. You've been bullying your neighbors in Los Angeles. They haven't had anything. You know, they've never done anything wrong to you. And what? now when we no! get to, when we get no! to South Dakota." When we get to no, South Dakota, I'm going to bring you back heathens. down to earth. Do not give those heathens 
any credit, okay? Uh, you don't understand how frustrating it is w- with the people that, that, that live in the apartments near me. It, they are freaking loud. I am going to keep it at that because I'm sure they can hear me yelling. What? So he's been bullying his neighbors into uh, into releasing their freedoms uh, of, of their living area uh, because he just wants to be a tyrant in his own building. It is what it is. Uh, but there's going to be a fist fight between me and Joe. Yeah. And, you know, we don't ask that phones are brought out because it should just be a come and watch event. You shouldn't be, it, it shouldn't be <laughs> uh, distributed. Uh, you know, it, it will be property of us and believe. So if you do distribute it, we will have to tack you on with a fine of about 25 G's. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> <that's> <laughs> yeah, there's a, uh, you will be taking a copy, copyright uh, claims court. That's uh, so basically uh, it'll probably be, well, I don't know. I, where are we gonna? What are we gonna stand? Are we gonna sit? Are we hoping someone has chairs for us before the game or during before the game? Before the game, uh, I think we should just show up with a case of something, and then I'm sure people will just uh, will friendly invite us over. Two cases of something. I, Two I cases. Do- Once we get through the first case, then that's when the fight's gonna happen, and okay. then um, then then we'll go and we'll be friends again and we'll watch the game. But okay, the, he's very irritating sometimes, and uh, he thinks that he can talk, run his mouth all all you know willy nilly, and then he doesn't realize how close November is, and it's gonna be a, a definitely a showdown in that parking lot. Mm, yeah, showdown to mm. say the least. Okay, keep it up. All right, Sean. Let's actually talk about some some damn football. Um. We got a really good one this weekend. So we we've got the uh, the team that's been in the mix for tie for the, the the top one spot, and then another team that has always been super explosive offensively. And I I, I think uh, oh yeah, it's the it's the ooh woo game of the week. I forgot. I need to I forgot. That's what the name. <laughs> allow for me to fix the lower third. There we go. Ooh, ooh, game of the week. I completely forgot that we did that. I know. So do I. I, I it's so stupid. Nobody knows. Nobody so, knows. <laughs> Sean, we've got Central Arkansas facing off against a very talented Sam Houston team. And right now, Central Arkansas is one and two on the year after losing to Arkansas State and then a close battle with a very good Missouri State team. They did blow past Arkansas Pine Bluff, but now they have to face Sam Houston State. And I think this game does two things for me, Sean. It, one, will, I think, solidify Sam Houston's right to be tied for first with South Dakota State. And at the same time, if Central Arkansas can at least remain competitive or if they win this game, it revalidates them and it pushes them back into just the ranking conversation. So both of these teams really need to prove themselves. Sam Houston, a lot less because we already know what they are, but this is just going to be another momentum builder for Sam Houston to add to their resume and say like, hey, we beat another really good football program. Because Central Arkansas is probably going to finish with a good record even if they lose this game. If it's going to be like a playoff game, that's what the, that's what we can expect from the contest this upcoming weekend. Obviously, two teams that have the capability to score 40 points and to uh, at least Sam Houston could hold the team under 20. I know Central Arkansas can, at least in previous years, has had the potential to hold the team under 20 points. So when you look at these this schedule, obviously, Sam Houston has handled their season a little more, uh, a little better than uh, Central Arkansas is. But we've been talking about this offense for UCA for the since we started doing this show. And I won't discredit them. I know, what was it? They lost to Nichols one year, and it was just, we mm. thought that it was all done for. And we thought it was Nichols' year, and then Nichols ended up choking, and UCA went into like the semifinals or something like that. Right. And it's just what they do. And they, they are a team that once you start underestimating them, they'll make you look like a fool. And that's how it's going to operate. And Sam Houston State, when they're going into this game, they're going to think, oh, they have two losses. Uh, they weren't great. You know, they, they were scoring a lot of points, but we're going to test and we're going to push them. You could try that and you're probably going to score some points on them. Uh, but you got to be ready because when Braylon Smith and the two, the two headed monster on the outside is coming at you, you're not going to know where to look at times. And you're going to look, it's, that's how it's going to look. It's going to look bad for Sam Houston state. If they allow it to get bad. Right. I, this is actually going to be kind of similar to what we were talking about with that Eastern Washington, Montana game where, Central Arkansas does not have a good defense. Their defense has been 
very suspect and what has kept them in football games and what has helped them and always buoyed them is that three-headed monster that you mentioned, the one of Brandon Smith, who is a top 10 FCS quarterback, without a doubt. You have Lawan Winningham. You also have, um, oh my God, I can't believe Tyler it. Hudson. Tyler Hudson. It just came to me right as you were going to say it. Tyler Hudson. So many damn names to remember. Both of those guys are also top 10 FCS receivers. At least one of them will get an NFL opportunity, if not both of them, or at least opportunities to play at the next level with all these other leagues popping up in, in 2022. So this game is really going to be dependent on can Central Arkansas be as productive as they typically are despite playing a very, very aggressive and talented Sam Houston defense that has completely stymied the two opponents that they've faced. That being uh, Southeastern Missouri, who we know is typically a pretty good team, only 14 points for them. And then NAU, who just beat freaking Arizona and scored over 20 points and regardless still beat a Pac-12 team, they held them to 16 and beat them 42 to 16. That is a really, really good defensive team. But if Central Arkansas has even a little bit of offensive success, and this becomes a close game, I don't think it will become a shootout, but if this becomes a close game, uh, I would be worried for Sam Houston Stake because they have the receivers and the playmakers to make a last-second play on a final drive. This might come down to who has the football on a two-minute drill because if it's Sam Houston, they'll probably close it out because, because Central Arkansas's defense is bad. But on the other side of things, I don't know if I can uh, completely count out these uh, these Central Arkansas guys. I'll tell you, I wouldn't like to face uh, Central Arkansas on a two-minute drill. They have eight sacks through three games. And that might not seem like a lot. That's more than what Sam Houston has. I think they have four through three. Uh, and that's not a great... Uh, so, if Central Arkansas can get to Schmid and get him out of the pocket, which is not what he's been doing this year. I think he only has 30 yards rushing so far this year through three games, which when we saw the playoff run last year for Sam Houston state, he was running all over the place this year. He's been more uh, contained in the pocket. If they can get him moving out of space, I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing for central Arkansas and also uh, Sam Houston state because Sam Houston is rolling with him staying in that pocket, right? Right. But also we know that he can be a dual threat if he gets outside the pocket. I expect sacks in this game for Central Arkansas. I know Sam Houston State's offensive line is very solid. They are technically sound, and they don't have a lot of MAs, which is really the uh, number one cause for giving up sacks, uh, especially in college football as a misassignment. And uh, if they can get home a couple times, those will, at least in college football, Joe, how many times do we see third and 16s get converted? Not that often. No. So what were you going to say a lot? No, <laughs> you were going to say a lot, weren't you? Maybe <laughs> depends on the team. <laughs> Did you see where I was almost leading up to with that? Where no, go ahead, you're going to have a better shot to end drives for Sam Houston state. If you can get to the quarterback. And I, I, I think that um, central Arkansas really has the potential to do that on their defense, defensive backs. Not that, not that promising linebackers, not that promising, but defensive line on the front seven. If you can get to him at least twice, you might have a shot. Yeah, the this game is going to be really interesting, though. Uh, I mean, regardless, I think that's like the the stupid, simplified way of of putting it. But what you know, one thing that we know is that Sam Houston has had some consistency on offense. Schmid returns, not really consistent completion percentage wise, because he's still hovering around fifty five. But we know Ramon Jefferson can take the load off. Jaquez Ezard has kind of been non existent through the past two Dude, games. Three catches. Yeah, I, I'm going to text the walk on radio, guys. I, I want to text him and ask him what the deal is with him. I don't know if they'll give me the scoop or they probably won't let me say anything on it, but I'm curious what the deal is there. It, it might be an injury. It might just be something nagging. But that's one thing though, to, to be fully aware of in this game is as much as we hype up Sam Houston and as much as we know that they're good, and I'm sorry, walk on radio, guys. This isn't me bashing you guys, but like they haven't been tested. The you know NAU and SEMO, I understand are quality programs, but I don't know if they're necessarily competitive teams that are going to be indicative uh, or comparable to Central Arkansas. Like this is you need to go up against test. a blue chip for sure. You need right. to. That's how you. That's how you get up in the rankings. That's how you do. Mm-hmm. 
That's how you maintain. That's how you really get uh, battle hardened for the playoffs, which they'll be in unless they just completely have a nosedive and, and the, the believe in FCS football jinx hits them. But they'll be uh, in the playoffs, so they do need to get battle hardened against blue chip teams who we know they can score points and make stops and kind of make explosion plays. Whereas other teams, if you beat a, a good team, uh, it's like game plan. Like you just get out coached, especially. We just see teams get out coached. Like, how did that happen? How did that went? I mean, Northern Arizona beat Arizona. They out coached Arizona, right? Right. Simple as that. If uh, it, it, we're not saying that Sam Houston State out coached uh, the two teams that it, it beat so far this year, but uh, they're going to have to coach as well, if not better, than uh, UCA because that's this is where it needs to be. Everything needs to be on par. And then the five games that determine the play, uh, the game, three of them have to be for you. Yeah, the five game, the five plays in the game that that determine the winner, you have to have the majority. This might end up just being a Sam Houston blowout, but hopefully we uh, hopefully we don't have our <laughs> our fantastic uh, FCS jinx that we tend to to have on teams. Uh, Sean, before we get to FC estimates, I just want to remind listeners: if you haven't done so already, you can compete with us at PlayActionPools.com for Believe's Football Pick'em Challenge. It is open to anyone; it's completely free. It doesn't cost you anything to join. And if you want to, uh, my name is Joe DeLeon on there. I don't know what Sean's name is, but if you want to look and say, hey. Doofus Sean, I did better than you this week. Colin, I think this would be perfect for you. You should sign up. Uh, sign up with it for our contest, Believe Football Pick them at playactionpools.com, and then get your picks in each week. We're going to select the 10 highest profile games of the week between the NFL and college football. Whoever gets the most picks correct each week will win a pair of electric sunglasses and a pair of DC shoes. Again, go to playactionpools.com and sign up for the contest, Believe, B-L-E-A-V, Football Pick them. And if you plan on hosting your own football contest, go to playextrapools.com today. They've got Survivor, Pick'em, as well as cool sportsbook style concept. A cool sportsbook style concept. Say that 10 times fast. Called Build Your Bankroll. Playextrapools.com, your new home for all of your office sports pools. That was a mouthful. Pulls. Shut up. <laughs> You had play action right all the time. I was listening hard because after that, after the Tuesday show, I'm like, oh, let's hear, let's hear what he does this time. I was foaming at the mouth ready to see what you were going to mess up on. And then just at the end there, you were so close and you hit play action pulls. And I'm like, oh, here it is. It's time. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to let him live that down. I'm not going to let you live this one down. Sean, I don't care what I do the rest of the season. I don't care what happens in FC estimates the remainder of the year because do you know what happened this last week? I am on a roll. I had a, a first good two weeks of the season. But Sean, I went perfect. I did not have an incorrectly picked game. It doesn't even matter what you did. <clears throat> Six for ten. I was perfect. Did not pick an incorrect game throughout the entirety of FC Estimates. And I am going to ride this momentum. Would you, any, any words? Usually when you win, you get your five seconds of fame. But I went perfect. Have you gone perfect before? Look, everybody, Joe hand-select this last week's uh, games. He knew, I picked he, all he, of the important games. What do you mean I knew what was going to happen? I actually think I did the notes last week. <laughs> yeah, wait, you picked the games. You hack. <laughs> Look. Absolute hack. Hey, even a dumb donkey gets lucky every now and again. I, I guess uh, that's not really the, the that's not really the phrase, but it, it is now. <laughs> Put that on a shirt. We, I was talking about. Yeah, I, I was talking about maybe doing some shirts. That, that's a good one. <laughs> Let me see where I messed up here. You know what? Actually, Moorhead put up thirty five on Austin P. Everybody was taking a big old deuce on Sean's back because of that. It was a good. That was pretty good for me, knowing that Moorhead actually gave him a game. Hampton and Howard, Hampton just destroyed them. That's that's a loss mm -hmm. I'll take on the chin. Uh, Presbyterian, that's a loss I'll take heartily on the chin uh, because they have completely left me that uh, let me down. Wofford Kennesaw toss up, so I'm not too upset about it. Joe just went chalk, 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 not taking any risks. Why would I take a risk if I know somebody? What, like I'm not just out here to take risks. I'm out here to correctly pick games, you moron. <laughs> so the the current percentage after three weeks that was aggressive. I'm sorry. The the, the current percentage at three weeks, percentage. 84 percent. Really, you got to get that dig in because I'm no. Now I'm now I'm now, I'm, now I'm in the barrel. I got to get it. Uh, yeah. Got to get it back on you. <laughs> 27 for 32 for 84 percent. Sean is 21 for 32 for 65 percent. You're still doing better than that first season. I would All hope right. so. Yeah. You were like at 40 at one point. All right, Sean. Easy now. 
let's uh let's roll into this bad boy holy cross at monmouth well i picked all these games first so i'll obviously answer these first uh monmouth uh holy cross no after beating yukon they haven't really done it for me monmouth i believe they lost to a sub d1 school i think stink san diego at davidson why do i stink I said they stink. Not oh. you. You're doing it fine. San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> just being mean. San Diego at Davidson. Uh, San Diego got the doors blown off last week. I'm taking Davidson. Uh, I'm going to take San Diego for a rebound game. Wofford at VMI. Wofford, you broke my heart. I'm taking VMI. Uh, give me VMI also. Uh, Mercer at Furman. Uh, give me the Furman. The, the Fur Man. I'm going to take Mercer. They gave uh, Alabama a close fought battle. It was a very close one score game. That is enough uh, momentum that they need. Uh, Sac State at Idaho State. Could you? I can't believe Nick Saban was pissed after that game. It's We should have talked about that last week. I don't know why we didn't because uh, it was so goddamn funny. <laughs> um, I'll take Sac State here. Uh, I'm also going with the Sac State boys. NAU at Northern Colorado. You know what? <sighs> Recent history has shown us after a massive upset, here comes a big, big up, big old letdown. But I'll go with uh, ANU. Let's break the streak, boys. ANU, NAU, NAU, Northern Arizona. Give me the the Lumberjacks. I believe is their their moniker. Illinois State at Southern Illinois. Uh-oh. Sorry, oh, oh, Kwame. Hey, Kwame. Sorry, I'm gonna take the Salukes. That's what I'm gonna do. They've they've treated me well so far this year. Give me the Salukis of Southern Illinois. I'm going to take the uh, Salukis as well. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kwame. We're very, very sorry. You know Sam what? I'm Houston. not. Kwame has been rather short with us on Twitter as of late. <laughs> what? What? When? I think a, a couple of responses ago, a couple tweets ago, he was rather, he, he didn't seem as friendly. Oh, I don't remember that. Maybe you're just being sensitive. Maybe. Like you always are. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take uh, SIU. Sam Houston at Central Arkansas. Central Arkansas will give him a game, but uh, or, uh, Sam Houston will win this. Yeah, uh, Sam Houston by a mile. Bryant at Marist. Bryant. Bryant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was how you said it. ACU at Lamar. <laughs> uh, I'll never take Lamar, ever. I'll take uh, ACU here. Uh, Lamar is so Why? disappointing whenever they get into FC estimates. Every time, Joe. Every time they're 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 the team that gets blown out. They're the team that you look back and say, "Why did we take Lamar?" I'm not getting bit by Lamar again. I'm going with ACU. All right. Well, uh, I on the other hand, I'm going to pick Lamar. I don't think ACU is very good. They suck. That's fine. Okay. Got a problem. Lamar's going to lose. <laughs> All right. I think that's a, a good note to end on. Um, subscribe. Listen, Sean, you got anything? You know what? I start the Thursday shows with so much energy and so much fun and positive vibes. And then you'd get, and you get you lose it. all your steam. And it just is. It takes it, it crushes me at the end of this. Sanderson Radio on Twitter is me at Jody Leone on Twitter is him. We are the FCS football podcast presented by the Believe Podcast Network. You can like and subscribe wherever you're listening to. And check out our YouTube channel, or the, the YouTube channel that Joe manages. We have a playlist on there with all the video in case you wanted to see what I, we I look like during it. the show. It, it, I did you, it. What did you rename it to? It's NFL Prospects Pod and FCS Football Podcast. Okay, thank you for the plug. Appreciate that. I was just going to say, you know what? It's fine. You'll be able to find us. We're pretty distinguishable amongst the rest. We're so pretty this ugly, was- too, and pretty wide. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we'll, anyone else out there is not ugly and wide that does FCS commentary. We'll, 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 we'll be back next week with plenty more uh, FCS football ac- action. We'll be recapping week four, previewing week five, and somebody's going to have some energy on an open, or else we're going to stop doing the show forever. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll, we'll be back next week.